Hey, how's it going? Today I'm going to ask a couple of AI assistants to do something for me. Check this out. Hey assistant, generate a word cloud based on the content of this URL. Then the agents are going to talk to each other so that they can generate something that looks like this. Now if I wanted to do this from scratch using Python, it would have taken me a few hours maybe. But Autogen agents were able to do this in less than a minute. Now in this tutorial, I'm going to show you everything you need to know to get started with Autogen agents. We're going to go over what they are, how they work, how you can create them, and finally how agents were able to generate this word cloud all by themselves without any human intervention. But before, make sure you subscribe to the channel right now so you don't miss any future updates or any future tutorials. Let's define what agents are. Now you see you can think of an agent as a digital version of a person. This is because agents can use tools, language, and communication with other agents and people to solve problems. Now let's take a look at this diagram. It's not fancy, I've tried my best, so I hope you appreciate the design effort that I've done on this. As you can see at the top here we have a human and then we have two agents at the bottom. On the left side the one with the hat is called the user proxy and on the right side we have another agent agent with the mustache he's called the assistant this is a two agent workflow setup because we have two agents that will work together to solve the task that was initiated by the human it starts with a request the user says generate a word cloud the request reaches the first agent the user proxy in this case it forwards the message to the assistant this is because the assistant integrates with a large language model so it's able to understand the request and generate the necessary code then the assistant will send the code to the user proxy once the user proxy executes the function it PNG file is created and the user proxy lets the assistant know that the code works. Finally, the assistant informs the user that the request succeeded. Now during this process, the assistant may generate code that doesn't work or the user proxy may fail to execute the code. For example, let's suppose that the user proxy is trying to execute a function that requires a dependency but it's not installed on the system, so it runs into a module not found error. Once this happens, the user proxy says to the assistant, hey, I ran into this issue so I wasn't able to use your code, check it out and let me know. Then the assistant using the large language model generates a fix for this and sends it back to the user proxy. Now this back and forth may take a few minutes but usually the agents figure it out by themselves and come up with a working solution. Awesome! Now it's important to point out that both the user proxy agent and the assistant agent are subclasses of a generic agent type within Autogen called conversable agent. Now conversable means to have a conversation. So a conversable agent is essentially a generic agent type that can be configured to have conversations with other agents and people. Now let's zoom into the user proxy agent to see how it's different from the assistant agent since both of them are subclasses of the conversable agent type. Now a user proxy is configured by default to prompt for human input every time it receives a message. In my case earlier, I set this to never so it never asked me for anything. But by default, that's how the user proxy behaves. Now, the second point is that a user proxy is not connected to a large language model. That's by default. You can obviously override these settings later. Finally, code execution is configured by default. This means that the user proxy is the agent that's going to execute any code that's received by other agents within the workflow. Cool. Now let's take a look at the assistant agent and see how it's different from the user proxy agent. Now by default, the assistant agent will never stop within a conversation to ask for a human input. Next, it integrates with a large language model to solve a task. This means that it can use the large language model to generate code and understand the request. Finally, it is not configured to execute any code. This means that it can generate the code, but it's going to need the help of another agent with code execution capabilities to execute the code. Let's see how you can build an Autogen app with a two agent workflow based on the word cloud example from before. First, we're going to open the terminal window. Then we're going to create a new directory and we're going to call it Autogen Agent Demo. Demo. Next, we're going to create a virtual environment and activate it. So to do that, we're going to do Python VNV and we'll call the environment VNV. And to activate it, we're going to do source activate. Now, since our assistant agent is going to be using a large language model, in this case from OpenAI, we're going to need an OpenAI API key. So if you don't have one, go to the OpenAI console and create a new key, copy it, and we're going to add it here in the terminal. And to do that, we're going to type export and you're going to add your key here. Now I'm going to use pip to download and install Autogen and set it up within our project. So I'm going to do pip install by Autogen. The last thing I'm going to do is create a new file app.py. Okay, now we're going to write some code. First, I'm going to do import OS. In our case, we're going to be using GPT-4. So we're going to do LLM config, and then we're going to say model. We're going to be using GPT-4 and our API key. That's the variable that we used from the step before. Next, we're going to create our assistant agent. And to do that, we're going to import 
assistant agent and then we're going to do assistant assistant agent i'm going to call it assistant this is a friendly name that you give to your assistant or your agent you can call it whatever you want and we're going to pass in the configuration llm config that's because the assistant agent is going to be using gpt4 to generate some code now we're going to create our user proxy and i'm just going to add here and i'm going to do user proxy user proxy agent human input mode never so i don't want it to stop and ask me every time it receives a message i just want it to work autonomously and then we're going to say llm config false now by default this is false i'm just adding it here to show you that you can modify these things now we're going to set up our code execution config and that's going to be executor and we're going to say autogen coding local command line code executor and this instructs the user proxy agent that it should execute the code in the local command line and we're going to specify a directory coding you can call it whatever you want this directory is going to be used by this agent to store code or any other files all right now for this to work we just need to import autogen here so we're going to do import autogen easy so far right the last thing that we're going to do is initiate this conversation and send in our request and we're going to see how the agents are going to talk to each other and figure it out let's do that i'm going to do user proxy and we're going to call initiate chat then we're going to specify which assistant is going to handle the request so we're going to say assistant so this means that user proxy is going to send in our message to the assistant then we're going to specify our message generate a word cloud if you're not subscribed to the blog, make sure to check it out. Save the image as wordcloud.png. That's it. Now we can specify extra parameters for the initiate chat here, like max turns. And that's going to specify the maximum amount of messages that these agents can use. But for this example, we're not going to do that. So I'm just going to keep it like this and I'm going to save and we're just going to run this. Let's go back to our terminal. So we're just going to do Python app.py. Now I'm just going to go through every interaction between the agents. First, we can see that the user proxy relayed our message to generate the word cloud to the assistant. As you can see, that's the first interaction. And then the assistant using GPT-4 made sense of this request and came up with a five-step solution. And then it generated this code, which is kind of impressive, to be honest. And then the user proxy tried to execute it, but it failed, as you can see here. And it said to the assistant, hey, you know, the code failed because uh, there is no module named word cloud. Then the assistant said you don't have the word cloud python library so install it and it gave it the pip command to install word cloud beautiful soup and these other packages now the user proxy comes back to the assistant and says hey the execution succeeded this time so the assistant comes back to the user proxy and says great the python script was executed so this means that you have a word cloud png file in the same directory where you ran the script and terminate now if we peek at the directory that the agents are using the one that we called coding we can see the generated files and what the agents did behind the scenes. Check this out. That's our working directory. And as you can see, we have our app.py file. That's where the code is. And we have our environment file. I'm just interested in the coding directory that we've created. This is where the agents did the work. They wrote the code here and they executed the code from this directory. Also, we can see that the work cloud file is saved within this directory. Now, let's take a quick look at the output and see what it looks like. All right, that's actually impressive for something that took about 20 seconds. Now, obviously, that's a super basic demo of what's possible with autogen agents. You can build more complicated workflows that include not just one assistant, but many more, each one with a unique set of skills. The sky's the limit with what you can build. I'm glad you made it this far. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel because there are many more tutorials like this one that I'm working on. That way, you don't miss any updates. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon.